Hello, everybody. We've got a couple NBA playoff games tonight. Two dudes to talk about a couple NBA playoff games tonight. DraftKings contributors Julian Edlow and Kenny Ducey. Best bets. Let's get after it. 76ers and the Hawks. Series tied at one. Series shifting to Atlanta, where the Birds are actually underdogs. One and a half points. Uh, does the home court boost the Hawks, or do you like the Sixers in this one, Jules? Yeah. Um, took a couple of road teams last night. Didn't work out, although the Nets should have won. Uh, I'm going with I'm going to the, the road team in the better spot again here. Uh, Atlanta has, you know, done some things in this postseason that, uh, you know, that can scare you. They've been really hot shooting it from downtown, which they're good. They have good shooters, but it's not going to continue forever. And really what I like is the Hawks came out and blew doors in that first half of game one. But since then, the Sixers are winning the last six quarters by nearly 40 points. They've made the the big adjustment that's going to help them out is no more washed up Danny Green on Trey Young. Much bigger, much longer. Ben Simmons, Thibel, those guys can at least limit Young to the point that it's really going to help Philly. And then Embiid just having a mismatch no matter who's on the floor, even if it's Capella. I think the short road favorite here, you know, I think that the Sixers are going to get it done. They found something these last six quarters. Kenny, what about you, man? Yeah, I, uh, I I do think that the Hawks get a boost here. I mean, that's certainly uh, that's certainly evident when you look at the records against the spread during the season. The Hawks at home, twenty five and thirteen. That's almost a sixty six percent cover rate. And the Seventy Sixers on the road did not play very well. Uh, they were all the way down at seventeen, nineteen, and two. So I do believe that the Hawks are going to come out a little stronger here. You also look at the fact that the Hawks shot around thirty six percent in the last game, I agree with Julian that, you know, really what we're looking at here is like one half, right? The, the Hawks had one insane half, but that's what happens with the Hawks. So we've seen it all postseason long. They just have these halves. They have these games where they just absolutely explode and shoot the basketball incredibly well. And at home this postseason, they have shot the ball well. And I think as long as they do that, they have a puncher's chance in this game. I actually think they do take this game. And I disagree with Julian. I think that Clint Capella could Good. absolutely maybe not shut down Joel Embiid, right? But he he could slow him. Maybe he scores 22 points. And I, I do believe that they have the personnel here to match up with the Sixers. I had not been impressed with the Sixers defense. Um, so in Atlanta, I think it's a different story tonight. Jules, anything you'd like to add? The Hawks probably get one more game in this series. I think rather than betting, you know, it can be tough to predict when it's going to be. So let me say, I guess, rather than backing the Hawks or the Sixers rather in this game, I think the best way to, to back the Sixers is to take them minus a game and a half in the, uh, for the series. So you're going to get the 76ers taking this series in six games or less. Um, and that gives you the wiggle room for the Hawks to steal one more. Uh, and you don't have to guess which one it's going to be. So like, you know, Kenny has some good points. The Hawks are good. The Hawks aren't going to just roll over here. We saw them, not roll over in game two after that terrible start. So give Atlanta credit. They're going to battle. They probably get another game. Um, but if I think the Sixers are going to win three of the next four, I'm, I'm probably going to back them here tonight. Uh, total for this matchup sits at 224 and a half. Which way are you leaning here, Kenny? Uh, you know, this is a weird series because we saw the pace at 107 in the opening game. And then last game, the Sixers absolutely slowed it down. 97 and a half pace rating. I still think that the over is going to hit here because uh, I, I got to back what I just said in the opening answer. I think the Hawks are going to hit more shots than 36% from downtown as they did in game two. And I think that, you know, the Hawks defense looked bad in game two and it is a bad defense, right? That's the, the only thing that's been consistent in this series is that the Hawks have played poor defense. And that's also what's been the case all season long is that the Hawks did not play great defense. They survived on an incredible offense. So I do believe that this game goes over. I think that the pace goes back up here with the Hawks at home. I think they can control the pace a little bit. And I do think that they hit more shots. I think that there's a lot of room here to hit the over. Over or under on this game, Jules? Yeah, in terms of betting it, I'm staying away because, you know, Kenny, Kenny made good points for the over, but there's also ways that if I like Philly in this game, I also have to kind of lean under because they're going to try and grind it out a little bit, uh, have fewer possessions, most importantly, limit Trey Young with uh, those much bigger defenders. So I, I I think this is one, if the Hawks win, it goes over. If the Sixers win, it goes under. And the game's a near pick em. So that makes the total almost a coin toss as well. 
Uh, late game tonight, guys, has the Phoenix Suns looking to take a commanding 3-0 series lead against the Nuggets with the benefit of being in Denver now, though. Uh, the Nuggets are two-point favorites. Is tonight the night that they get back into this series, Jules? So everything points to the answer being yes, um, especially after seeing, you know, the Bucks somehow grind that one out last night. Like, look at how this is setting up perfectly for – the Nuggets to win game three and, and the Suns are somehow underdogs after dominating the entire series. And then the Suns open as favorites for game four, just like the Nets are now favored game four in Milwaukee, a six point swing in that spread with literally no change. We're just playing the same game in Milwaukee on Sunday and the spread six points different. Uh, the narrative is there with Jokic receiving his MVP award in front of the, uh, the home fans before the game. But some, I mean, Phoenix has dominated this series. Um, so I'm kind of going to fade the way that I think this is supposed to go, uh, which can get a little dicey in the NBA playoffs. I, I think the Suns are too good right now. I I'll take the Suns on the money line as the slight dogs. Uh, what do you want to take here, Kenny? Absolutely. I'm with Julian. I'm taking the Suns money line. I think they just, you know, I think that this is not the Blazers, right? And I think that a lot of people, uh, we see it in all sports, right? That, that odds makers trying to look back on historical trends, uh, whether it's in the same postseason or the year before. And look, you know, I think that they're like, okay, well, you know, the Nuggets, they did play really well. They did have a high powered offense, but that Blazers defense was so garbage, uh, yeah. Emerson. It was really terrible. Uh, this is just a very good defensive team. And I think the Nuggets are getting exposed for having Austin Rivers and Facundo Campazzo as their bat starting backcourt. You know, I think that if this were Jamal Murray, it'd be a lot different of a story, but that's just not the case here. I think that finally uh, we've seen a little bit of regression from the Nuggets against a, a very solid defense. And I don't think that they have the ideas on offense to get through the Nuggets. I mean, we saw last, last game, game two, down the stretch, Jokic just popping threes, you know, trying fadeaway jumpers. I mean, he has the autonomy to do that because he's the presum uh, presumptive MVP. But that's just not a good offensive strategy. They just don't. They've they've run out of ideas. I think to 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 win this to win games in this series, and it's just going to take like Austin Rivers hitting eight threes again to really get them back in this. And I, I don't think that's going to happen. It's uh, pretty Paul, really quick. What? Go ahead. It, it's pretty unbelievable that like how bad Portland's defense has to have been to let Denver advance when the backcourt matchup was Lillard and McCollum against Rivers and Campazzo. Like. Kenny was just talking about now it's it's Chris Paul and Booker against those two guys except with their team actually playing defense and we're seeing a massive difference so far well uh Chris Paul has been great so far for the Suns which of his prop bets do you like or do you looking at someone else in this department Julian um so Chris Paul is clearly healthier than he was in the middle of that Lakers series uh and we've we've seen that so his point prop is set at 15 and a half. His assist prop is set at nine and a half before we were getting the plus 110 last game on, on the assists. So I thought just taking the plus 150 on the double double, like I gave out on this show, was the way to go. And it, it paid out. Now the assists are minus 134 for the over nine and a half. So the double double price has changed to, to even money. But I think the points are going to get there. So if you're going to bet assists over nine and a half at minus 134, you're just going to take the double double at even money. So if you bat Chris Paul, I think that's the way you do it. Um, but for the Nuggets, you know, it was sneaky getting, uh, you know, MPJ is banged up. Will Barton came back and ate up some minutes in that rotation. So Austin Rivers under nine and a half, which Kenny actually gave out on this show. But once Will Barton was in, that gave me everything I need to play that. And then playing Porter Jr. unders with, you know, the back. It's not like he twisted an ankle. The back is the reason he went from the first pick in the draft to the 14th pick in the draft. So MPJ unders, as long as he's still banged up, also work for me. All righty. Uh, Kenny, how about you? Yeah, you know, I always love that Austin Rivers under. I think I've taken it every single game, and it's been good to me. And I think that I would, sure, I would take it again here. Um, but just looking at some of the more exotic markets, uh, just, you know, to have a little bit of fun. I actually think Aaron Gordon over a half a three uh, makes a, a little bit of sense here. I know it's minus 155, but, you know, look, he's he's wide open all the time from three. He likes to tout the fact that he can shoot. It's been a it's been a, a something that's stuck in his craw ever since he was drafted that people said he couldn't shoot. And uh, he, he's hit, you know, a three in, in the last couple of games. And I think now you look at going to Denver, I think that they're going to, uh, you know, see a little bit of a boost in offense and uh, or excuse me, he took a three. 
in the last two games. He has four three-point attempts in the last two games. I, he was shooting threes. I think he'll hit one tonight. Uh, it's just one of those that I have a feeling about, and it's it's a fun one to track during the game. So, yeah, why not? Uh, Aaron Gordon over half a three. Kenny, on the fantasy side here, either showdown or classic, who would you say is the play tonight? Uh, my play here is Bogdan Bogdanovich, $6,400. We saw one Bogdanovich last night go off. Now another one, his brother, going to go off tonight. Look, this guy is just really good. Uh, we have to admit it at this point. He's really, really good. He just hits everything he looks at, it seems like. 35 points over the last two games in the scoring department anyway. DraftKings-wise, he's he's hovering around you know 30, 30 DKFP a game, and, and that's going on like a month now. I mean, this guy's one of the most consistent things we have in DFS right now. And he's still only $6,400. He gets you 30 points. You're pretty happy with that. But I think his upside here is 40 DK fantasy points. I really do uh, in a matchup here, despite the fact that there is a good defense. And that's why he's priced this way. The usage here, the minutes here, just in incredible. And again, I mean, Matisse Thybul is putting a hand in his face and he is just knocking down shots. He, it doesn't matter how good the defense is. This guy just seems to rise above it. I am going to have him in all my lineups. Bogdanovich all the way. Anyone you're going to have in all of your lineups, Julian? Um, I'm going to skip the lineup part because I make my own rules and give two other thoughts here. Love Thought it. number one, I learned this from Greg Ehrenberg. Boyan Bogdanovich and Bogdan Bogdanovich are not brothers. They're just two dudes with those names. And apparently that last name in their country is like Smith. So that's everybody's name. Uh, awesome. Fun fact. I thought they were brothers for years. Learned that from Me our too. good friend, Greg. Um, number two. The Nets lost that game last night. They should have won that game last night. Um, You're still mad because you took them live? Still mad, yeah, plus 650. That would have been a nice juicy one. The Nets are going to win on <laughs> No one cares. The Nets are going to win on Sunday. Uh, so these next few days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning, is going to be the last time we see the Nets at plus money to win the title. After they win game four in Milwaukee, they're going to be even money or lower. So... Take the Nets money line, whether Harden plays or not for Sunday. Take the Nets to win it all at plus 135 before that's gone. 